Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome. Hold on one minute, fam. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. I am your host, Khadija. Well, I hope that uh, this fourth day of January finds each and every one of you in wonderful health um, and that you are um, sticking to your resolutions, whatever they may be, not being hard on yourself if you haven't because you can always rise up and wake up and shake your stuff off and try it again. Hopefully, though, you have sticking to what you've promised yourself. And that's not the case. So, first of all, I just wanted to say hi, you guys. And again, I told you I was going to be back because I wanted to make just a quick video. And I, I don't want to stay on these two individuals too long because it's just a concern that I have. And one was Kim Burrell. And I don't want to, um, you know, I don't really want to ream her. Um, a new behind but I do want to make um, some comments regarding the stuff that she said because in my opinion this is the stuff as black people we have to stop I don't think we even have time or space or this is just my opinion my humble opinion or room to be trying to divide and separate and um, defile one another any further i think the larger society as a whole does a pretty good job of that and we really don't need no help um it's almost like that little you know, remember the bill duke when he was in that um what was that uh i think it was minister society you remember when he kept telling that guy you done fucked up now don't you no you done fucked up now don't you you remember when he told that guy that that's kind of how I feel about Kim Burrell, because it's so difficult for a gospel artist to uh, pop the mainstream. I know it is very, um, very uh, exciting once that happens for you. When you talk about stuff like people like the Clark sisters and when they did, you brought sunshine. You know, that's just it's amazing when you have the ability to cross over with a gospel song and it's something that shouldn't be taken you know lightly if you are in the music industry okay Kirk Franklin and Stump I mean that was a very big accomplish, accomplishment so I'm saying that to say uh, Kim Burrell knew she just had this song out with uh, Pharrell she also knows that she just got done working on um, a couple songs with uh, uh, um, Frank Ocean So to me, it is very hypocritical and disingenuous to preach that sermon. I mean, what the hell did you think, Kim? First of all, the the the, the it was a hate speech, and I heard far too many of those sermons growing up. I hated them then, and I hated them now. I used to sit back and just watch my grandfather just insult and humiliate people. And they used to make me so angry because I said I was saying to myself, you know what's going on here. And you just turning your back about the stuff that you do know. You you turn your, your back on your um, uh, sons. You turn your, um, your intelligence uh, level off when it comes to people that are real personal in your family because... They're playing the organ or they're doing the things that the church need to keep the people coming. And all of my relatives, I must admit, are A1 musicians. And so um, when they're driving, when you're bringing people in the church and the music is pretty much um, <laughs> what keeps them coming, the big choir, the good choir, and when the director is... I mean, I, and y'all, y'all know. Excuse my friend. I'm just gonna say this. 
the, 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 the director, the choir director could be a flaming queen. And you know good and well that your pastor knows, but he's not in the, he's not concerned with that because most of them pay good tithes and they bring in the people that's going to pay good tithes. So that's not even a concern. But then get up in the pulpit and don't, and preach stuff indirectly against people. First of all, I think that's really cowardly. And I think it's, it's just, it's insanity. Plain and simple. I'm, I have a cousin who had an abortion and she's not the only one. So, and I'm not mentioning her names or anything because there's a lot of us who, you know, did some things that we're not very proud of. She sat up in church and he went in on her doing one of his sermons and it was something to the reflect of yeah, if you wasn't doing away with all these babies, then, um, you know, lie, you wouldn't be sick. Now, people in the church just started looking at her because they was trying to look around and see who was sick. And they were like, oh, she's sick. So maybe she's doing away with the baby. See, this is the kind of humiliating craziness that black people do in black churches that are ignorant to me that are way off base, way out of line, and just total madness. If that is what you felt, and if that's what you wanted to say to your granddaughter, what was wrong with you calling her into the office and having this conversation with her? Why would you embarrass her like that in front of the whole congregation? Same thing with Kim Burrell. What in the hell were you thinking? I mean, why? Why would you make a speech that was so hateful? You said something to the effect of sit down serpents and, and, and I, I'm I'm how do you say it? um uh, uh uh sit down you serpents and then it was something to the effect that the homosexual spirit was gonna be wiped out of your church and wiped out in 2017. It, it was said by you. The people heard it, and so then you came back with this apology. And I, I'm very confused by it because you said, I, I never said LGBT. I never said that last night. I said sin. What? That's not what we were talking about. You, We were talking about homosexuals. That's what you were talking about. So how you flip the script? And then, I mean, I don't, I, I just don't. Your words were venomous. They were hateful. They were vile and disgusting. They were judgmental and so, so fucking cruel. And how dare you? How dare you? I don't like fat jokes. Okay? Because it's not funny. And it seems like black people should be the most sensitive about people. We're supposed to be such a loving people. But yet and still, all the vitriol and all the anger that we have for everything that we don't like in society, it seems like we just project it on each other. You know, we just project it on one another. And in one sense, you will have people talking about uh, there's... Um, Scientific evidence. This is what they'll say. That there's certain ingredients in food causing agents that will cause a person to um, flip and be able to uh, flip genders. There's also some technology that the army is working on that turns, they said, the, the uh, animals uh, gay, if that's what you want to call it. What do you think? I mean, there's a lot of women who had a Lupron shot. A lot of times that Lupron shot is all is stuff that um, is full of male hormones. Okay, so if a person is injected, and, and let me just ask a question. If this is what is happening to us as a society, for why in the hell would you blame them and talk about me? How, how much sense does that make? Because it's been gay people all through time. 
You know, I mean, I'm just thinking about even, you know, because I always say, if you shut down all the gay people, you wouldn't have no entertainment, probably. You wouldn't have very much. Because most of your entertainers and singers and producers, a lot of them, or they go both ways. What is the secret? I, personally, I don't think gender is really that defined. I really don't. You notice that once older people get older, you know, there's a lot of times that, that it really doesn't matter. Did you notice that a lot of times when women divorce men after they get in their 50s, the man is dead in five years and the woman goes on to live a healthy life? I mean, what? So, so I just think there's a lot of things about this X and Y chromosome now that, that, that we are just making too much out of. And it's such a small part of your life. I mean, it's not like you stay in the bed having sex 24 hours a day and for, what, a good 15, 20 minutes, you'd rather say vile and uh, uh, just venomous statements towards people for something that is so small and irrelevant in the larger and the scale of the universe, in my opinion. Now, we're not talking about child molestation or pedophilia or anything like that. We're talking about two consenting adults and you people bring up the book, but you never, um, you said sin, you know, but y'all know damn well that's not what it is you, when you talk about homosexual, because you're not talking about uh, a woman shouldn't wear anything that pertains to a man, because you was walking across that pulpit with pants on, and you're supposed to have your head covered, but you wasn't covered your head, your weave was all down on your back. Okay, or what about the scripture that says that the woman is not even supposed to be in a pulpit in the first place? So that means you already was wrong in the first place for even getting up there and saying the shit. It, it, you know, it's those are all ritual, ritualistic craziness. And I keep saying to you all, and I say to myself, I say to people that encompass me, you can't be hypocritical. Just like I said, y'all can't claim that Africa gave you everything and Africa is first and we the first to do this, the first to do that, the first. But then when it comes to homosexuality, oh, we didn't have nothing to do with that. Are you crazy? That makes no sense to me. And I don't believe that. If we the first in everything else, then we was the first homosexuals, in my opinion. Okay? Because that was the first people. And I believe whenever there were people, there's always something different. There's always some uh, aberration. There's always somebody that does what is an aberration or somebody that's different. It happens all through time. You know? Now, I, I, I'm not saying that maybe the Greeks uh, took it in and uh, had more of it and the quantity of it was just uh, <coughs> enormous. I'm not saying that. The point I'm trying to make is you can't have it both ways. You can't say we're responsible for everything on earth except that. It's, it, it To me, it makes no sense. It just makes no sense. And maybe, like I said, that's just my old brain thinking. Okay? So, I, 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 I just... When I thought about Kim, I thought, um, you know, for her to push those immature religious beliefs on to uh, other people, I think the best thing that ever happened to me when I got from up under the dogma of my parents... And now all that religious stuff. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. When I went on the road at 13 years old with a show band. So I began to see so much after that point. It was really no turning back. And that I realized that all kinds of sciences and astrologies and things of that nature. that Metaphysical principles. Things that just transcend religion. And when I brought these discoveries to my relatives, of course I was ostracized. Of course. So people who have been ostracized, they understand it's not a good feeling at all. And the Bible in the hands of a wrong person, again, I say it over and over again, is a terrorist manual. It's a freaking terrorist manual. And Kim, Ellen now, has rejected you. You won't be coming on her show. Uh, Janelle Monet said, uh, actually, she confirmed it for us. And she said she has no place for hate speech. And so did for real. 
So you really cut off your nose to spite your face, and you can go and say, well, you did what Jesus told you to do, and uh, I did what God ordained me to do. All I can say is this. It's been a long time, and Jesus ain't came back yet. And um, this capitalist society is still uh, requiring that we make money to survive. And um, if you shut down in the business that you're in, and you shut down and slow down your work, when you know that that industry is full of people, that the same people that you condemn, to me, that's nothing but a fool. So you can stay on the chitlin circuit because that's what you're going to go back to. Unfortunate because you're very talented, but that's probably what's going to happen. I mean, and so if, that, if it was worth it, then you have to sleep with yourself at night. You don't have to sleep with me or anybody else in this society. If your husband is fine with it, okay, then you be fine with it. But I know deep down inside, as a singer, you're, you're wounded. And you're not going to tell me in your quiet moments, you, you, you don't think that your words were venomous and hurtful. And that's not the way a good so-called Christian should do in the first place. So I'm not going to spend too much time on you, Kim, because really, you really stuck your foot up your own behind. And it's going to be, you know, it's really kind of sad. So, and, but there's nothing that, you know, can be done about it at this point. And lastly, I'm not going to stay on this brother too long because I don't know him very well. But from what I'm seeing, I'm, I'm kind of suspicious. And like I said, I don't talk very much about the conscious community because I spend a lot of time um, doing investigation with narcissism. And I think that's very important because I try to tie all this into mental illness. Because I think that that is so pervasive on the planet. And then when you got a group of people who are as um, prone to um, animalistic behavior, and then you have that type of um, narcissism to be the mantra of their existence, then you already know that that takes up a lot of my time. So with that being said, I'm just going to kind of get back to this particular person that I I just think y'all need to bear watch it and you need to take a look at because I was looking then every once in a while I go through that conscious community and the channels and I remember hearing uh, the brother polite saying that he didn't believe in black power because that's obsolete now and he doesn't you know and I'm trying to figure out why would he say that and it was almost as if he was making a mockery out of Sonetta to some degree he was saying um you know, he think that black power shit done played out. And he had two gentlemen on the side of him, and they were pretty much co-signing. And he was being really sarcastic about it, in my opinion. Um, but like I said, I didn't think too much about it. Um, what I did start thinking about as I was watching that is the people who start saying, I was hearing people saying that he was not, giving them the merchandise for the stuff that they paid for. And I thought that was horrible. So he made a video about what had happened. And according to his own words, it was $40,000 not a, uh, that hadn't been collected. And then there was these people who hadn't got merchandise. Um, and supposedly he's trying to explain how he's locked out of PayPal or pay, whatever. The bottom line is, if people are complaining and they've locked your uh, PayPal account because of nefarious practices and you have people complaining about their books and their um, orders not being taken care of, don't you think you should be trying to serve them first so people will keep uh, positive things to say about you? Because I think you're a very positive young man, but there's some shady little characteristics I'm feeling, but I, I don't want to go out on the limb. It's just some something in the milk seem to be mm, a little not clean. But it's just speculation at this point. I like your format. I like your program. I like um, the information that you talk about in terms of uh, the vegan diet. Um, so in terms of your multiple whys and stuff like that, 
Listen, I've been there, done that. It's not going to turn out good. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> and there's plenty of women around this internet who I think, I've seen a few of them on Sonetta's uh, program that have had communal living before. And so maybe some of them have shared their experiences uh, with them. Hopefully it will, but it may not. And with that being said, how can you be responsible for on for forty thousand dollars? And I'm not saying whether you got beat up by the police or not, because that is, could be true. I'm not saying that you're fabricating the story. I just think it's kind of bold for you to be asking for seventy-five thousand dollars more from the people who are already poor. When you haven't even made good on the damn people that's expecting you to give them their merchandise. How does that work? I don't understand how you would just so boldly ask for more money. And, and, and as our people are just so willing to be led like sheeple to me that nobody is saying, well, listen, wait, 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 let's slow down. Um, and what is this sovereignty uh, thing about? And it's correction status uh, or status correction is what you call it. Um, doesn't that help in situations like this? Isn't that what you were kind of promoting? I mean, so why would I be trying to fundraise $75,000 when I have my sovereignty, I have my status, my correction status, and all this stuff like this, but yet still I find myself in the place, the same situation as a regular nigga that don't got no credentials? Hmm. Like Arsenio said, things that make you go... Hmm. And that's one of them. So that's my problem with him. And right now, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to go in on him. I kind, I, I like to, the, the fact that there's a lot of things about him that reminds me of myself 20 years ago and his family. Um, maybe longer than that, maybe 30 years ago, reminds me of myself. Um, but I have a problem. And when I say reminds me of it myself, I mean the living arrangements and things of that nature. I don't mean scamming people out of money, if that's what you're doing. But what's done in the dark is going to come to the light, because truth pressed to the earth will, what, rise. So I'm not here to say whether you're doing something or not. This, vi this video probably not as hard as the other one with Umar, because the Umar's is too much. It's just too, too, too merch, too merch, too merch, too merch. I'm done. I am so done with him. So I don't even want to go back into that no more. Take the information that he got that you can use. But if black people, if we as a people don't feel that we deserve to have people in front of us being who they say they are, then guess what? We the damn fools. Nobody else. Okay, and if people cipher money out of us because we're so desperate to be led like sheep to a damn slaughter, then there's nothing that can be done for that group of people. All I'm saying is, if you're doing that, you need to be exposed because the people that can't help themselves, maybe somebody needs to help the person that's doing it, and that ultimately will stop it in um, in the first place. Because we don't need people to be taken advantage of, even if they're too dumb to know it for themselves. Somebody got to speak up for them because they may have children. And their children is, is expecting them to make the right decisions. And because they may be so smitten by a leader or so taken um, under their wings and charm that they may be making decisions that affect their children in a negative way. And that's stuff for me to look out because they're all my babies. And if I call it, if I see it, I'm going to call it out. I try to stick with the family structure, and that's what I love to do. But when I see something looking crazy, then it needs to be addressed. And I, and I have to do it. I think I've paid the universe enough time, and the universe has granted me enough grace to still be here. So I'm going to take this time, and I'm going to use it wisely. And I want to do it and still be loved. Because I don't want to set up and start enemy, make enemies. That's not my intention. My intention is to... Let my family know that I love them. Sometimes scolding is good for us, and that's me included. Name calling is not necessary, and that's what turns people off. But I think that if we do stuff in decency and in order, then maybe we can move forward. That's just my opinion. And I could be, and you may say that I'm a dreamer, 
but I'm not the only one. Okay, y'all know the rest. All right, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. I'm going to go now. Um, I'll be back a little later, and we'll see you in the mental house. Bye-bye.